Um, did you, uh, did, did you already start recording? Yes. No. Do you want me to stop? Well, I was just going to say, Chrome doesn't let you shrink down all the way. So oh, yeah, we can Firefox switch to Firefox. Do a slightly different version. That's like, okay, that's fine. We'll get there. The <laughs> um, yes, we're going to introduce panelists first. And it um, looks like a new version of, of Firefox just so. Okay, um, so starting with our, our panelists, we have a lot of people here who've done a lot of work with different responsive based <laughs> themes. Um, and we also have Zakia who gave a presentation earlier today on creating your own uh, base theme from, or your own theme, responsive theme from scratch. So hopefully this panel will give you uh, the opportunity to have more insight into why you might choose one theme or another, um, which is probably what a lot of you uh, are wondering. I know I wonder it every time I choose a new theme for a project. And if anyone here wants to contribute as well, please do. This is very much a conversation. So starting, um, <laughs> oh, starting oh. here with the one playing with the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Stoller, can you introduce yourself? Uh, I, I'm Jeremy Stoller. I'm a senior graphic artist at the California Science Center in downtown Los Angeles. And I also run Stoller Design Associates, which is really just me uh, doing freelance work in web design and development and graphic design and science illustration. And I want to thank Jeremy for being on this panel. I literally strong-armed strong him into it because he's doing some interesting exploration into Aurora with Singularity and Breakpoint, so that should be interesting. Chris? And you make a horrible bouncer then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Chris Charlton. Because I was sitting in this chair just at the last session, I got to stay. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I myself, I've been doing a, a lot of CSS development, um, teaching CSS, and just as I did in the last session, uh, now trying to teach people SAS uh, so we can all do better and work smarter. Mario. Yes, my name is Mario Hernandez. I'm a web designer for the federal government. I'm also a freelancer. I've been doing a lot of web design for a long time. Uh, in the last few years, I've been using uh, responsive web design, talking about it, teaching responsive web design. I've been using the SERP Foundation framework uh, independently of Drupal, but lately I've been uh, uh, playing around with the uh, foundation theme by Ismael Sanchez. Uh, uh, so that's a nice uh, theme to start with, kind of a base theme to start playing around with, and uh, hopefully I'm able to answer some questions. Great. Huh? Uh, I'm Matt Rather. My business, my company is called Rather Creative. I'm a full stack Drupal developer, but I lean towards Drupal theming and front end engineering, and uh, have built sites successfully and unsuccessfully using a lot of responsive base themes, uh, and have some scars and horror stories to tell about. <laughs> Zakia? Hi, I'm Zakia. I'm from uh, Sage Tree Solutions, which is down in San Diego, and um, I do front end development um, and been working almost all in Drupal. Um, and uh, I did the presentation on base themes, but I actually use Omega a lot. Uh, I, so I, I, I do themes for scratch, but I also am a fan of Omega. Mm -hmm. Mike? Hi, I'm Mike Stewart. Uh, I've been theming Drupal since 4.6. Um, Don't you yeah. still use 4.6? <laughs> 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 uh, um, yeah, I, I'll just add to this. I, I, I run a small shop in Long Beach, uh, a bunch of freelancers that work together. Uh, but that'll add to the story about some of the choices we make. Great. So we can pull up any site that you want to pull up. I'll just pull it up here when you're talking about it. But. Um, I'd like to just start with the basic question, and any of you who want to answer can. Which theme do you find, when you're having to do a responsive theme now today, which theme do you find yourself starting with, or do you start from scratch uh, most often, and why? Can we go down the line? Or? Sure. You would. Uh, well, I'll jump. I I just went through this process myself recently. I I mean, I started as a designer. I had taken an extended uh, break from designing and theming just because of other projects I was on, and recently came back to it, um, which with this, which is up right now, um, where I had to create and theme a site. Um, this this one is very much still in progress, but um, I knew I wanted it to be responsive. 
Um, and I knew that I wanted to find something that would carry me into the foreseeable future for a little bit beyond this project that I could get behind. So um, that was kind of my quest when I went to DrupalCon this year, was to see what's going on and to try to play with a few things as quickly as I possibly could and hopefully come to some sort of decision. Um, and what I landed on was using the Aurora base theme um, with the singularity uh, grid system. Um, and uh, I can go more into that if you want, or I can come back to that later. I suppose as to why I chose those specific. Why things. did you Why did you choose Aurora and why, Singularity? Uh, um, well, when I think of responsive in general, to me mostly that means CSS, and when I think of CSS mostly that means SAS. I knew I wanted SAS. Um, I knew I didn't want a grid system that does crazy stuff in the markup. I wanted it to be in 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 the SAS. So I knew I was looking for a SAS grid system, um, and I knew that I was looking for uh, a theme that would not be overly restrictive to what I could do. I wanted basically a blank canvas. I almost did not do a base theme at all. Um, that was my initial thinking, as I was would just build my own from scratch. Um, but I saw a couple things that made me want to, to try out some of the base themes and, and ultimately Aurora. Um, I liked the Singularity grid system because of its flexibility um, and it, it, I can do simple things with it but I can also do some more crazy complex stuff like asymmetric grids if I ever want to do that or you know if you want your grid width widths to be based on the Fibonacci sequence or something you can do that in Singularity. Um, so that sounded good uh, so it wasn't very limiting for me um, and, and the Aurora um, base theme is pretty clean. It doesn't do very much. Mostly it just cleans stuff up. It uh, makes the core code a little more HTML5 friendly, um, which I thought, oh, I want to do that anyway. So if it's going to do it for me, then great. Um, so it seemed, and it, it also has some features which I have not used yet, but which I want to grow into um, with uh, integration with the uh, Bower um, package management and with uh, Grunt task management, um, which if you were in Matt's session last hour, uh, he talked about, and um, it all sounds very good and like things I should be doing, so um, I didn't have time to figure it all out uh, before I started this, but uh, this project, but, um, but it's, it's a direction I want to head in, so. Is there an example of something in this particular site that Aurora and Singularity really helped you do? Uh, ooh, um, it, it is HTML5, so Aurora <laughs> helps me with that, I suppose. Um, uh, it uses, um, and well, I mean, it's it's set up with a, a grid, which you can kind of see if you shrink stuff. It, it uh, The grid change, another thing I like about Singularity is that you can have sort of different grids at different breakpoints. So now I'm dropping down to a three column grid um, or a two column grid or a single column grid. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what else. Um, yeah, and just some other modules I can throw out there that I used for this is uh, the picture module, um, which the guy who creates Singularity and uh, Aurora um, also has a module called Borealis, which has a, a responsive image thing in it, which I kind of looked at. It's a lot more passive. I liked the direction that the picture module was going in more. Um, and I, I used picture element even outside of the picture module to do things like the logo. So mm -hmm. the logo there is it's using the picture. So that tiny little logo up in the corner is what shows up when it's small and then it jumps to larger versions um, later on. Uh, myself, I, I guess I'm just old school. Um, but for Drupal, I stay within Zen, uh, Zen 5. Uh, there's a newer Zen 6 coming, but uh, Zen 5 is responsive, HTML5, CSS3, SAS um, ready. Uh, it is responsive, but uh, I would say that every single other thing that you're going to hear today uh, is getting a lot more buzz uh, than Zen is. I'm, again, a little bit old school, so when I saw that John Albin was you know, kind of going responsive and sassy with Zen. Um, I had built so many other themes on Zen before that I felt at home. <laughs> you know, it was very much that way. Uh, plus I can email him and bug him. 
Uh, <laughs> does he sound on the recording? Oh, do, you, do you have an example of a, a Zen site? Uh, uh, actually, uh, so me, my Zen site right now is still in development, the big one that I have. Okay. I haven't been able to apply to anything smaller, mm -hmm. uh, like personal projects. I just, I hate my own designs. Uh, yeah. But what I've actually been enjoying, it, the biggest problem for me was uh, I did want to try to go through a bunch of them and try them all out and see what I liked. Uh, but what I what I started to find out is, A, uh, I'm, I'm not that young anymore, uh, and I just don't, I really, I don't have that patience, um, even though I have the, uh, the, the curiosity to do it, um, because when I was last going through picking a good base theme, and I had settled on Zen, that's when like Omega was coming up, Fusion was coming up, so I had kind of gone through this drama before, and I've seen that play out, so what I did is I felt comfortable staying in Zen for now, but I've got an eye on foundation, don't let her know yet. You know, I'm, I, I, I want to walk around and kind of look a little bit more. But I am looking at foundation a lot because uh, what I've seen is that their project is absorbing a lot of other components. Now, some people who like small cores would not like that and appreciate that. But I do see where they're going with it. And I do like, you know, uh, uh, that project and where it's leading towards. It's good today, Ish. You know, Ishmael, you know, he builds a lot of stuff on it. Uh, but for me, myself, I'll be honest, I, I guess I've just been super lucky where I've been able to call the shots and if I want to stay in Zen, I can stay in Zen. Uh, and people like Mike, who's helped me on some stuff, uh, he just kind of rolls his eyes on me and just goes, fine, I'll do it. Um, but I feel in general, I feel lucky that I, we all can kind of have our own, you know, kind of flavor and do the same things. And we will all end up getting the same features. So I am kind of also waiting it out uh, to see if there is a clear front runner. Um, one of the big things I did like in Zen, though, that I will say uh, for people who like to get a little bit under the hood, uh, it works with a, uh, a new uh, kind of project agnostic grid system called Zen Grids, which John Alvin also made. But it's very easy to literally swap out the whole grid system and uh, apply, you know, one that Jeremy had or, you know, something that's new and hip uh, today. Um, because some people still use old 960 grid, and that's kind of a little bit, you know, kind of fixed even though they're trying to make it you know, bigger and broader, there's other grid systems that are more popular. And uh, I am able to take advantage of a lot of those. Um, and I'll be honest too, I, you know, I'm, I'm that guy that will push back on a portion of design if I just think that it's gonna take up too much development time. So I get to play that card, not just because I'm you know, new to something, but really I have to think about budgets and time and processes and including other departments. So I'm not really much more free to kind of jump in and call the shot only without thinking about repercussions for other people involved on the project. So uh, I'm actually ha very excited to hear some of the insights you know, from the panel here. Um, but uh, one of my biggest challenges has been you know, seeing the stuff kind of build on top of each other and watch you know, a lot of activity and feel like maybe I'm getting a little bit behind. Um, but I've spent a lot of other time in responsive images. So I've spent time because of Retina stuff. Uh, right now I'm at SpaceX and we love our rockets to look hot. Our CEO, it has to look freaking prime. He just will complain if he sees Jaggies now, you know, on his retina screen. So I've been spending a lot of time trying to make sure that those processes are easy to maintain and, and produce in the sites. And I'll be honest, responsive imagery is, there is nothing ironed out. There is so, it's worse than picking a base thing. Today, you guys have it easy for a base thing. The responsive images, it's, it's a problem. So what I'm doing is I'm letting everybody else hash the base theme piece and I'm concentrating and seeing and trying to build myself up from, you know, crap with responsive imagery and just see what is going to be the prime solution. Because after a while, you start to kind of get used to, you know, that looks like a good signal of, you know, that project. I believe anyway. Zakia has a responsive images session. No, I can't. Oh, you yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I knew Sorry. I could put together too, but that's a, that's it would have been a great idea, huh? Yeah. No, so but, I, I, yeah. don't, I don't mean to sound so long-winded about it, but I wanted to be very honest that I haven't been able to try other ones. I've been reading and watching, but I got my work to do. So, you know, I very, I very much have to kind of come back to my area and really, really juice, you know, that base thing that I've picked, which is Zet. And he's Aurora, and he's going to be Foundation. We're going to hear more, so I would love to pass it on. Is he Foundation? <laughs> well, uh, that's one of the options that I'm uh, contemplating right now. I've mm -hmm. started a couple projects, and that's the theme that I'm starting with. But I've also looked at Zen. Uh, in fact, just this past week, I started a new project, and I'm looking at Zen for that. Uh, having worked in Foundation outside of Drupal, I've been able to do a lot of really cool things with it um, and uh, make use of everything that Foundation offers. So it is nice to be able to bring that uh, set of tools into Drupal. 
and create a responsive website uh, uh, that uh, that will work and, and that is standard compliant basically because foundation itself is standards compliant. Do you have so, an example? Not with foundation, enough? but I do okay. have so if you go www c a c d us courts 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 uh, U.S. Courts. 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 Oh, courts. courts. <laughs> now, Oops, not with U.S. You can keep talking all the time. <laughs> the, the, my first okay. responsive website, which is what you see here, is actually one that I, I designed by, from scratch. The reason for that is because I was provided a theme, a Drupal theme, by uh, the P Office of Public Affairs in D.C., and they provided a fixed width theme with the 960 grid system, the fixed width 960 uh, grid system. So I was given the task to basically re-engineer this theme and make it responsive. So this is what I end up with. I pretty much did uh, the conversion from, from, from scratch by hand. Even the math when it comes to the grid system, you know, converting from pixels to, to percentages, I did it by hand because I wanted to make sure that what I was doing was working. But once I figured out that it, it was working, that I had control of what I was doing, then I went and grabbed the, the fluid version of the 963 system and applied it to the, to the theme. But uh, everything you see here it was done from scratch from the design point of view. Uh, and what that means is that you can find every mistake you can think of on this uh, design <laughs> here, too. Because we learned mean, a lot. Right. Uh, it was the most uh, awesome learning experience for me because. Uh, this was my first responsive website. It just happens to be for the largest federal court in the nation. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so talk about you know pressure. The nice thing about it is that uh, the Office of Public Affairs now coming to me and asking me for guidance on being able to convert this theme uh, uh, responsive, so they can you know distribute to to the different courts nationwide. But uh, things that I've used here, for example, are the um, Chris is completely right about the responsive images. That is still debating. There's still being no, worked there's, out. There's no, <laughs> there's no solution. There's you know a few things that work here and there that will probably uh, do the job for you. I'm using adaptive images here yeah. with the flex slider uh, slideshow that you see here. So so that's worked well for us. But uh, you know foundation is one of the things that I'm looking at just because I'm familiar with the framework and I kind of know how to tweak it, how to work with it. But I'm also open to other solutions like uh, the Zen. And uh, Aurora is another one that I uh, that I've been keeping my eye on. So, uh, you know, it's, it's Chris is right. You know, there's so many uh, options out there, and uh, there's not one front runner right now. It's just nice to see what comes up in the next three or six months and, and see what uh, where things go from there. Great. Which one did you say? Sorry, was that the custom stuff problem? The theme. Well, this is scratch. custom thing. I, I did it from scratch myself. Yeah. Um, so the answer to the question of which responsive base theme I would go to kind of depends on what the brief is and who the client is uh, and what the budget is uh, <laughs> for the project, right? Because if, if I don't have a lot of time and I want a lot of stuff that's auto-configured out of the box, uh, I'm probably going to go one way. And if I want to take time and kind of create a bespoke web design that I'm going to build up from, from you know, just normalize, uh, I'm going to go another way. Uh, for that, last one, I too, I too like Zen. I also like it because it seems to me like a lot of the um, a lot of the other themes involve kind of taking an external library and kind of dropping it on top of Drupal. And Zen to me, and this could just be superstition or prejudice or something like that, but it feels like it grows out of Drupal a little bit. If you want, and theming, right, is more than just writing CSS. Drupal theming is more than, than just skinning the page that you see. And if you want to learn Drupal theming, one of the best things you can do for yourself is to read the documentation that's included in Zen and to read the template.php that's in the Zen starter kit theme that you use uh, for base theming. Because it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or just start that's writing. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm still that. Or Sorry. just start writing functions and then uh, unbreak your site once you fix them. There you go. Now, but but I think that the I think Zen has has been covered well by Chris. So I'm I'm going to stick up for Omega here for a second, which I used in version three before 
development slowed up down yeah. on it. I guess yeah. it's picked up again. There's supposed to be an Omega Four. There's some betas out. I wanted to look at it um, uh, for this, but didn't get a chance to. But so um, Omega for rapid development. Um, when that's more important to you than best practices, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? When, or I mean, when frankly, budget doesn't allow you to be creative. Well, yeah, or to do things to do things that you want. I found Omega to be a, or when it's like actually in a site that I can show when when it's um I have a. a do you have my UCLA site? I, I do, but can you remind it's, me? It's uh, UCLA MFA 2012. .com, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so this, uh, this is, um, right, it's super quick and super dirty, but it had to be done more or less overnight because um, those were the constraints. I was trying to think what clients wouldn't mind having their, their site shown, and I figured a bunch of actors wouldn't mind the photos. <laughs> um, you know, it's, uh, oh, and there's, if we ever get into to, to, uh, horror stories and stuff like this, I have one that I want to talk about on, on this, because, <laughs> okay. because the thing, because the thing, the whole game is source order, right? And when you, when you put panels or display suite in, You've given up a lot of control over that, and you got to really kind of get your hands dirty fixing that. But um, another one, PeterAlsop.com. Uh, let me just give an example. Omega 3 stores configuration in the database, which is a terrible idea. Uh, it lets you create regions of the page pretty much willy-nilly, as you will. Um, but with this client, this was a client who's a children's singer, and uh, and. He, he went back and forth a million times. Oh, and there were no comps. There were no, you know, design. It was me by myself working for a children's singer. Um, he went back and forth a lot about, sorry? Sounds right. Um, he, he went back and forth a lot about the width of the sidebar. And should it be four grid units or three grid units? Wow. Right? And I could sit there with, I can, you can imagine what this client relationship was like. You know, um, is this is being recorded. <laughs> um, I love you, Peter. Uh, <laughs> no, um, and uh, and I could just do it in the UI. You know what I mean? And send it back. And I could turn that around in 30 seconds versus changing it somewhere in uh, in a SAS partial, recompiling the SAS, checking it into Git, resolving conflicts that you always have whenever you check compiled CSS into Git, pushing it up, pulling it down on the server, right, and, and clearing the cache and then going. I could do one, um, I could do one little, one little, you know, drop, drop down, down yeah. box, and and it's done. So that's that's why when time is more important than good practices, uh, you, you may make a different choice than than when time and budget are are uh, longer. I think I'm going to use Omega on my family sites now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, the site that I'm doing that uh, that has no base theme is, um, it's an intranet, but it's for ships that are going out to sea, and their bandwidth is literally um, like 56k yeah. modem, like old school. So it had to be as light as possible. Um, and in addition to that, um, I had also looked at Aurora, I'd been to, you know, the, the um, to DrupalCon and was really thought that was the way forward, but when I opened it up, it actually had, I was like, well, it actually still had more CSS than I, like if it, the idea is to build from scratch, mm. why don't I just build to scratch? Like it's giving me these tools to build from scratch, why don't I just do it myself instead of, you know, taking theirs? Um, so that was what it was, but, um, so I can't show that particular site because of it, because um, it's not open to the public, but um, if you want to see a site that I've done in Omega, um, comic-con.org is in Omega, um, it came to us already sort of built in Omega, um, and they already had the design. Uh, we, you know, did the menus and stuff and some of the other, you know, internal pages and, you know, finished out the site um, that they had given us. But the fact that, um, so the pros and cons were, 
we, it was already in Omega, it was easy to use. We understood the system, like we didn't have to like learn what their themer did. We knew what it was because it was already in Omega. The cons are like, Omega has, um, you know, one grid system. If you want to change the width of the gutters, you know, then it's kind of a pain and you're sort of overriding it. Uh, with another Omega site, um, the project manager was like, we need a 1200 pixel wide grid. And it was like, you just blew my mind. I can't possibly do this. Like, and so you had to write like a custom grid for it to work. So you, so when you get outside of like, Controlling your own design, having um, a simple site, Omega, you know, becomes, that's when we're starting to look at other solutions because you end up doing so many flips to make it um, do what you want that you might as well just write it yourself anyway. Great. Mike. Um, I can bring up amp.me is the last one I built. I, my go-to is, uh, uh, it's already been talked about it quite a bit, but I go to Zen. I just, uh, let, me, let me go with a couple. Uh, I also use fences, the fences model. Okay. Uh, I wanted to throw that out there. Um, <laughs> yeah. That hadn't been brought up, but, but no, if you're looking for cleaner, cleaner code, uh, HTML code, uh, check out fences. Um, why do I use Zen? It really comes down to the process. Uh, when I work with a bunch of people, uh, it allows me to bring somebody in on a project really easily. and. The learning curve is, is, is much easier, so there really isn't one because so many people have used Zen. Uh, it's also extremely flexible. Uh, in the spirit of also not doing another mod, you know, so when you create a module, you you, you know it's best practice in open source and Drupal in particular is to help work together to make a better module than to go go your own way. So that's one of the reasons I use Zen. Uh, there just tends to be a large community behind it um, and a large user base, which which also keeps you out of some weird buggy things that can that can happen. Like you know, a client that uses Opera or something that you might not expect. So Zen is really well tested. Um, I, in the past, I've used Fusion. You can bring up Odyssey. Odyssey. Com that was built on uh, uh, Omega. Actually, I said, so I, I, I used to use Fusion, that was back in Drupal 6, what? Drupal 5, I guess 5, not 8. Hey. This isn't it, is it? It's that spelling, how do you get that? Oh, A-U, no, A-U-D-E-S-S. Ah. Uh. E-Y, sorry. One of the things, real quick, uh, um, not to interrupt uh, Mike too much, but uh, he was mentioning, um, you know, people are familiar with Zen, and I, I, I have seen that, the behavior. It is the familiarity I noticed right away that some are, uh, like, uh, the new Zen will be their way to try SAS out, in a way. And there's that comfort level. Well, I get to use Zen, and if I fuck the SAS up, I can at least just go back to regular CSS, because I'm in Zen, you know? So there, um, there, I have seen that behavior, oh, literally, that oh, human yeah. response. You know, to the project itself, and what's seeing also is a kind of a gateway to get so, so, you. So it allows me to bring people in, but it also allows for really nice handoffs, and especially when you don't maintain a project. So if you ever inherit a project, it's nice when somebody hasn't done something totally custom. Um, if, if you're then invited into it, uh, so again, that's a standard. Uh, there are a couple things that were mentioned. I just want to throw out there as far as responsive images. Take a look at the picture module. Mm -hmm. If you haven't looked at that, uh, that's, that's been core of Drupal 8. Um, or, no, I'm sorry. Maybe it's yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah. Um, and what did I, what did I want to say? <clears throat> that's enough for now. Any, any? Great. Yeah. Great. Oh, uh, you know, in the past I had used Fusion. That was the first real theming system that had a fluid grid. Uh, Omega was really the first one that had a true grid, uh, and and it had a good good base. As far as best practices, that's exactly why I use Zen. It's Omega is confusing as hell if you knew what you were doing. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, in fact, Zen so long, yeah. five one, I believe. Uh, the newer Zen 5.1, not necessarily Zen 6, uh, is now taking the SMAC standards, SMA CSS. Uh, show of hands, who have heard of Smacks? Okay, that's more people than I thought would raise their hand. That's why I was curious. Uh, Smacks is uh, a new community standard around 
organizing all of these small includes that we're getting more dynamic. And I think all the themes right here and all of us on the panel, I'm assuming, uh, uh, would all say, your learning compass in SAS, that is valid for all the things we right. mentioned. Right. So learn SAS, get comfortable with compass if you can, and then your not only your CSS skills will go way up, but you can then adopt one of these newer base themes that are responsive and literally start running a lot faster. I mean, you won't feel like you're not using it to its full potential. I, but I, I, organization, I, and you were talking about standards and project, the Zen 5.1 using the new SMACS, S-M-A-C-S-S standards, uh, now even more so, you now know where to put something, like your button styles or how modular to get. Uh, and this is only going to help all the other projects. Mm -hmm. Again, we do, each project does start to lift from the other project for sure, you know, steal the good stuff, right? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's only going to get better, I think, for everybody, you know, the, the individual freelancers that are folding themselves into an organization and the organizations that need talent, you know, for sure. So we're going to, we're going to kind of skip ahead because a lot of the stuff that you already talked about addresses some of the questions that we had talked about. Um, but what about performance and speed issues from the themes that you like to use? Are, are there issues that you've seen on the themes that you like? Yes, no? I haven't gotten to the performance tuning part of this project yet, so I can't really tell you uh, how it's going to be uh, with Aurora. But from what I've seen, I'm not expecting any issues. Yeah. Uh, no issues I've seen with Zen. In fact, I feel like I could push it even further than what I've done so far. Yeah, no performance issues here. Just okay. make sure you're not writing script tags into the template files, <laughs> <laughs> which, which I've seen. That's a general problem for yeah. me. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that doesn't have to do with the themes. Don't put stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's usually not the theme that's going to be your performance problem. So, like, if you're using caching, if you're using, you know, varnish where you can, if you're Right. If you're doing the right things with your PHP and all that, then like the least of your worries is your theme. Like Drupal's your <laughs> issue. <Yeah. laughs> or if the theme is right. But if you turn on I mean, you turn on the performance features, right? Like aggregation yeah. and compression of CSS and JS and stuff like that, right? That's why you don't put script tags in the in the templates because it's outside of that <laughs> it's outside of that right. system. It, that being said, it is production. If when you're doing development, uh, something right. like an Omega might be a little bit slower because it is getting stuff out of the database. Um, it makes it easier for the newer uh, themer to, to start getting some of the concepts, but it definitely it's, it's got that performance as a result. You can change some of the Omega settings right in the in info file. That's what I would do, and um, and then you don't have to worry so much about the or store them in the database or store them in. Um, a feature or and um just be able to change that which kind of solves that problem right um but that's usually people who are doing that are already is that only for export of omega because i don't i don't remember it actually reading from the uh, from the you can set the defaults yeah, yeah. okay right. right but it's still going to go in the database and read from the database right no, you can export it three yeah no. it exports yeah. but yeah, is it reading export. it from disk is it reading the export or is it only using that to import i'm pretty sure it's Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Can and you use Delta mm -hmm. to like use context to switch to a Delta for later on? Dude, you just blew my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of yeah. Speaking of Delta, um, what about integration with things like panels versus display suite, um, context? Omega has Delta. Is there any anything that you've seen that you've wanted to do? Maybe you've wanted to use panels on something, or maybe you've wanted to use Display Suite, but the theme didn't quite allow for it. Can I, can I say something about Zen? If you <laughs> use context to put uh, blocks in the sidebar region, uh, but don't add them to the sidebar region through the Drupal block system, I've run into a problem where Zen puts the no sidebars class on the body Shit, be because those blocks <laughs> because those blocks aren't going through the normal that's just that is a problem through the normal <laughs> block that's, that's, that's why, why I can't finish a web page yeah but the, my, the whole point of using context is that I never yeah, want to touch yeah, the yeah, blocks yeah, system yeah, again exactly. I didn't run into that no? Hopefully. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now I want to. Okay. <laughs> no, really, because then I can understand. I can try to, you know, understand what the behavior is behind that. Yeah. Um, 
Right, you sure you want to release candidate one? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. So that's that's a that's a good note. And any other and what about rewrite your panel layouts, put them yeah. in the theme, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of using the stock ones and rewrite the CSS so that yeah, it Yeah, that's the key. And sometimes and this will happen with a lot of contributor modules. The Sometimes the CSS from the contrib module will really conflict with what you're doing. Um, it's, it's much better than it used to be. Do we not have a panel normalized CSS file like floating around? Is that what the problem is? It's like well, a panel, like a, yeah, I mean, a thing, you know, you may not necessarily, you may want to use grid classes on your panels, right, instead of the, uh, yes. Yes. you yeah. know, exactly. instead of right. the, the stock 50%, 50%. Yeah, that, that's, so, yeah, panels uses percentages. Right. One you might not be using that as a. That's what you didn't mention. I was using Fusion this week, oh. and uh, <laughs> it was uh, nodes that were like there's a node top, but it's using the grid system, so the margins were wrong. It wasn't really specifically like a you know um, integration problem, but sort of along those lines of like the thing that it's supposed to do magically all by itself, it the doesn't really do region? because it. Uh, because the node, um, the node top and node bottom are in the node, um, so the node itself has oh, a class yeah, of yeah, grid yeah, eight, yeah. but your two inside have are four and four. It's literally but, node top, not content top. Yeah, top. yeah, and then so it breaks, and then you're like, what? And then you're like, well, now I'm just writing grids. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> just also panels and display suite will change your source order. So when you do the browser with dance and you move back and forth, if you need your your content to reflow in a particular way, mm -hmm. it could mm -hmm. it could alter that depending on like panel column first, panel column second, and your grid your you know nice little promo boxes are in there. It's not going to go one two three four. It's going to go one three two. Right. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm going to give everybody a pass for the year of 2013. If you do ugly grids, if you do ugly, <laughs> uh, uh, ugly SAS, ugly responsive, I promise you it'll be better in 2014. Don't worry. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> we all get a pass, okay? We're all learning. Sorry. All right. Um, so what about the default styles that come on the themes that you use? Um, how, can you talk to those? Aurora pretty much doesn't have them. And okay by and large, and is actually getting rid of some stuff in core by default, which I think is what I like about it, and tries to make it easy to do more of that if you want to get rid of more core stuff and override it. Yeah. And if you're, so if you're looking for a blank canvas kind of a thing, I think it works really well. That's good. The question again? Default styles that come with the theme. What about them? So the uh, Zen theme, you don't have to use Zen grids for the grid system, but that is kind of one of the plugins that it utilizes. Um, I, I'll be honest, I actually practiced with the Zen grids on a static site first, mm -hmm. uh, and I actually liked it. And I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. And I've tried other easy kind of grids, but I felt that that was actually one of the easiest uh, that I'd used. So in a way, that's really kind of the only plugin, unless you consider Compass. Uh, and if anything, Zen really, really just locked me in heel and toe uh, into the world of Compass. I, 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 I literally have not left that, 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 that service platter. I am mm -hmm. stuck there, I'm magnetized to it. And I thank Zen because John Alvin and the other you know, contributors of Zen theme, they do so good on the documentation. You know, <laughs> even though they complain maybe some things might aren't documented, for me, there's so much in there already that I, I'm getting my work done. Um, so there aren't any especially weird plugins like like foundation uh, I know they have like a, a, a JavaScript slider and they've got all these other cool components But they're trying to really make like a whole piece together a whole suite right. and make it you know kind of low markup and all that and I get that um, But uh, through Zen and I appreciate John Alvin and the, the other people on Zen have kept it pretty minimal mm -hmm. Even though they added a lot and I, I really feel like wow if you look at the checklist from old Zen to now It's a huge checklist of new features So you feel like they've done just dramatically added a lot of stuff um, But when you kind of take it bit by bit, it, it, it's not too much And in fact half of them you can pretty much ignore it because they're just things that are free for you You know to take advantage of and build up from uh, and don't really need to get into the gut So um, Zen is pretty much around compass and that's about it. Mario, what about default? styles in Zurb Foundation? Yeah, you no. Know, the thing about Foundation is uh, very modular, uh, which means that you can customize uh, the framework to just include the things that you are planning on using. 
if you're not planning on using something, there's no need to load the JavaScript or the styles for that. So uh, the those features that are just on the framework uh, itself can be brought into Drupal. So it's, it's nice to be able to just exclude the things that you don't want to use. And uh, I normally uh, do a little overwrites uh, on some of the uh, default styles, uh, like for example the grid system. Uh, I always play around with the width of that. I, uh, I don't like the default uh, settings that the grid system comes with as far as the, the width of the grid. So I always play around with maybe increasing the width to um, let's say 92% and giving a 4% margin on each side of the, of, of the grid. Uh, but those are minor overrides. Uh, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with uh, pretty much everything that, that comes with the, with the theme because again, anything that I don't need to use or I don't plan to use with my theme, I just exclude. I, there's no even need to, for me to load on the, on, on the system. So. Great, great. Um, did you want to? Uh, we we need to kind of move to questions. Is there anything that you wanted to add? Yeah, I did. As, as, so Chris was talking about defaults, and where I just hit on the, the problem that I have with Zen. Uh, a lot of the compass variables uh, don't use a standard default setting. So in order to override them easily, uh, I actually have gone through and uh, set it up. So so compass allows you to uh, if if you. Mm -hmm set up a variable as a default, it allows you to easily override it, and if you haven't, then it accepts that value. So when I get in, I, I often don't go with the defaults that come out of the box. And so I have some variables, and I put those in a, another CSS, SAS so, file. But it's very easy um, for you to override that. Then, then it makes it, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Um, and I, I've been meaning to have a conversation with John Alvin to see if that's something that he might be interested in. Yeah. The, the okay. key is, you know, don't, don't uh, obviously, you probably already know this, don't override the source code, you know, the, the core code. You know, what I do is I obviously create my own style sheet, and that's when I do all my overrides, whether it's the grid system or any other style that come with the theme. Yeah, I just so do that. So, I mean, that's the just thing keep, yeah. yeah. Don't have core even <laughs> in the front end. <laughs> I, I mean, I turn off Omega forms, Omega whatever that makes that pager happen, like, oh, like Omega has a bunch of like kind of gross ones that you can, them, yeah. you can turn them off pretty easily, but yeah. I don't like most of them. To, to, to really quick build on what Mario just said, just to make sure it's clear, mm -hmm. if you're new to theming, uh, the, the idea is don't change any of the CSS files that come with the theme. Yeah. Make your own and reference that last. That way, if, if you do apply uh, new versions of it, uh, everything work so you get any fixes uh, but you still retain everything that you were using. There's actually a, a good new article about this Max uh, organizational standard of folders oh, and files with a legacy design or theme that has static CSS still and how like where in the chain do you start to migrate and peel back and still retain literally that uh, and they call it blame.css <laughs> because anytime they need to throw something in quick they put it in that file but they'll move it out later but bringing your old styles in it, there's a good article about that so you you guys definitely I, I think throughout the summer of the season uh, there's going to be a lot bu bubbling up of like you know this is what people are kind of doing now and incorporating the things that we've had uh, if I can real fast the biggest problem is not going to be development because we're going to engineer our way out of those problems Okay, standards will flow to the top, uh, best practices always will flow to the top. What I feel is the biggest problem, and we need to spend a lot of time on all sides of the fence on this, it's training designers, yeah. okay? Yes. I don't have a problem making something be responsive. The designer has a problem that that thing is not gonna be 25 pixels width all the time, no matter what, uh, or the height is the worst. I, you know, I have the biggest problem about height. Sorry, buddy, it's not gonna be 100 pixels tall all of the time. They're gonna add one extra paragraph of text. Right, you know, you know, bottom right of the screen. Right. Right. <laughs> us, you know, us again. The tools that you know, we're going to get out of that through software and engineering and best practices and, and training each other. It's the designers, it's the pixel people who need to start to a learn how to let go and b pseudo adopt these standards and practices and understand these so they can design better and not charge thirty percent extra for the mobile only single column version of a design. Because that's going to be antiquated thinking of responsive, oh, I have to bill you for this, bill you for this, and bill you for this. And so I'm letting you guys know, if you're designers, don't get folded in that old current, okay? You're going to be tossed out with the tide at some point. Definitely start to get used to 
responsive, you know, movable pages and blocks and boxes and all that, because that's really where all of this is going. And it's not just web, it's native apps. Everything will be going there. Photoshop. <laughs> so we have uh, only a couple, only a couple minutes left. I want to save some time for questions. So I see one back here. Yeah. Is there any kind of rapid prototyping tool that you can kind of, I, I, I walk on both sides of the fence, but I mean, I work with Photoshop based designers that go, no, it has to be a pixel perfect design. You know, that doesn't work with responsive, but it'd be great if there were some tools that you could go, look, here's the way that you can spin up a site, you can put your images in, and play around with it, and actually see it live. Give that to Mario. Uh, foundation <laughs> is, you know, what I use, as I said before, Foundation is its own you know, front end framework. So I start with Foundation uh, just on its own for rapid uh, wireframing and prototyping, because that gives me a very good idea of what things are going to look like on the browser. And then it's just a matter of bringing that code that I already wrote into Drupal, so I don't have to write the code twice. Yeah. So uh, lately, that's what I've been using for wireframing and prototyping because I'm able to explain to my clients or stakeholders, here's what the navigation is going to behave like, or what this is how the slideshow is going to look like. So uh, you're giving them a real idea of what things are going to be look uh, look like or or behave. And uh, for rapid prototyping and wireframing foundation for me uh, has worked really well. I know Bootstrap is another awesome mm -hmm. framework to use. And I know there's a, a Drupal theme, right? A Bootstrap theme for. Mm -hmm. There's a couple. There's yes, yeah. Open so, Framework. Yeah. So those are working sure. really well for me because it allows me to play around with uh, how things are gonna may look like or, or be structured like, and then bring that into Drupal without having to. It will be a familiar uh, tool to use basically already in Drupal because I already play around with it on Zon. Also consider using Omega three as a rapid prototype. Right, the GUI, yeah. just snap it together yeah. in the UI, yeah. and then throw that out and implement it for real elsewhere. Yeah. Question. I was going to say going back on not hacking the core files. Um, obviously, within when you create a sub theme, it gives you CSS files that you are supposed to go and change for generic page elements. So right. just to be clear on that. Yeah, there sub -theme. files you are supposed to use. So you own the sub theme. Them. The original theme owns the right. the, the base theme. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a good point. You had a question. Uh, as far as bootstrap goes, we're using that. Do you guys have any immediate feedback, any red flags that you aware about? Um, you guys use the for actual theme for yeah. So the, I mean, getting that markup, the bootstrap markup is awfully specific and a, yeah. little, a little heavy for my taste, mm -hmm. right? With you know, navbar, navbar responsive, right, navbar right, inner, right. navbar. You know what I mean? Right. So uh, getting Drupal to output that, I don't envy you that task. Um, you know, I don't know. Take we, a tricky. We recently <laughs> had we recently had a bootstrap. <laughs> we recently had a bootstrap based theme that we ended up disconnecting from. So. Um, we ended up almost turning it into a, a from scratch theme um, because of all that specificity. So it's something to consider. It's it's a good starting point, but it, the specificity can get you into trouble. Right. It almost seems as though we're rewriting a lot. Mm -hmm. Again, the yeah. trouble is today. We're still all feeling our way through it. We're <laughs> still. I mean, so you are in that transitional period. Sorry, bud. I mean, that's just, yeah, it, we're going to do that extra work. No one's going to care about, and we're not going to really remember at some point. I see a um, question. And that's just, that's just timing. Okay. Timing is everything, unfortunately. I see a question right back here. Always, yes, you. No, nah, just just Google responsive slideshow. Yeah. Flex slider. Flex slider. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Zurb has Orbit in it, which right. is great. Orbit, there you no, go. No, Orbit is in. Yeah, Orbit's in Zurb. Yeah. 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 And then there's Flex slider. The, the only thing that's going to get you into trouble is if you're hard writing widths and heights into your slider. Yeah, so that's, if that's you the key, which is if you if you just create an HTML file and open it up in a browser, it's responsive. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What what makes it not responsive are CSS rules from us back in the past that we've mm -hmm. done yeah previously that says 
hey, the only way this is going to work in every single browser is if we define widths. Um, and that's, that's really where that came from. Also consider consider IMG max width 100% uh, yeah, height, right. height auto important. And I realize yeah. that no one wants to live in important town, but, <laughs> like, yeah, right. but, uh, but still, that one rule will get you out of a lot of hot water yeah. uh, image-wise. I'll, I'll take one further, and finally someone made the, there's like a website like, do you need a carousel? That's basically like you don't really need. They're so like they're really bad UI. Users don't look at them. It's they don't the, uh, click them. the new skip intro. Yeah, it's right. like you. It's the, it's the new skip intro. No one like wants them except for site owners. Yeah. Like right. Don't, like developers don't want them. Users don't want them. But like people who have to own websites want them. Um, and the reason, so, right, the, the reason is they have not done the hard content strategy work of what is the most important piece of content on this page. Yeah. Like, right, and it's like not. I'm sorry, not every department gets on the homepage. You know. Oh, that's mm -hmm. worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so we have time for one more question. Make it a good one. All right. Uh, this might be out of scope, but I was wondering best practices with that. No. Yes. I'm just the jerk that's yelling it out, but I, I mean, I I commit I commit my my SAS continually as I'm working, and then periodically will com do a commit that's just compiled CSS uh, because currently I am using Git to help push stuff between my dev and my prod and all of that. Well, yeah, or even before that, periodically, if I wanted to push it out somewhere where anybody can look at it, I would and move it between computers. If and you're going to build a to tag, if you're going to generate a tag, that's probably a good way to add a hook that will do the uh, final uh, production co uh, compilation to compile the CSS kind of thing at the end. But yeah, I re I continually am checking in my SAS, and only when I really kind of care, I will do the CSS to make it easy for deployment in case I'm literally out of the country. And somebody just does a raw push or you know uh, clone, yeah. and they just thought it would work. And yeah, I, I don't want them to have to compile one thing that I don't actually have on my production box, kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. So the one thing to add, based on my own mistakes, make sure that you add SAS cache to your Git ignore file. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That, but it, like most things, it, it also depends. Right. If you have depends on how much control you have over the server environment. So if you're deploying with Capistrano or yeah. with Chef or yeah. with the build process, yeah. or even using Git with a post commit uh, with a post push hook, yeah. right, that can do the compile for you. Then never ever compile CSS, never ever commit CSS to your to your repo. Mm -hmm. But if not, it's it, you hold your nose and do it the way these guys have said. Well, we we have we commit our SAS and our CSS all the time. We don't have problems with merges because the CSS overrides. It's, you're just overwriting the whole CSS file. So, um, I don't know. It's worked for us. Where the, got... the problem is when it's debug stuff. When somebody's got their local stuff that they kind of, you know, oh, they cobble their settings. Right. Yes. And now I'm seeing your oh. full path of slash okay. users slash Mike Stewart. Oh, God. Slash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you should not do that. And on yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. we <laughs> actually have to end you know? because it's no! time for the next session. No! It's There's so time. much more. Thank you. For... <laughs> I don't get it. What? <laughs> the, what, what, what theme is behind this page you've got up now? This one, this one is Zen, right? Yes, yeah, the closest God. page. It's